Hey everybody, I'm Cass. I teach the Pilates at Yoga Life. I also am incredibly passionate about walking and running and encouraging people to put the Pilates method into all the things they do outside of here. So as a Qi running instructor, I teach a method um, of Qi walking and Qi running, which I want to take you through, which will make a big difference if you can try and practice this before you go. So these are called Qi body looseners. So we're going to start off working through your feet. So take your right foot behind you. I'll just show you from the side here. When you position your foot, keep your heel up. And also um, when you're bending your left knee here, you're quite balanced and solid on the left. All right, so we're going to start off with ankle circles. Five circles in each direction. And then the other way. Good, step the feet together and let's change signs. So this little simple routine that I do before walking and running, the benefits of it is that I really notice um, how my ankles and my knees and my hips are just relaxed underneath me, change direction. So if you start off with like stiff joints, often we have to use a lot of muscle power in order to walk and run. Step your feet together. Slide your hands down onto your knees now and we do knee circles. So you might hear or notice lots of things going on in your knees here. So let's warm and prepare your knees for what you're about to go out and do. So often we kind of don't think about um, all the preparing the joints before we go walking and running. And then standing up. So now we've got pelvic circles. So soft knees, and I'm going to curl my hips around like I've got a tail and I'm creating a circle. So ankle circles, knee circles, and now sacrum circles, five in each direction. And then standing up. So now imagine if your legs weren't starting from the top of your thighs. I want you now to think about them starting from right up here under the ribs. So when you're running or walking, you've got this lovely stride length from here. So we're going to stagger your stance, stepping your left leg back. Placing your hands up high here on the ribs, can you try and take your left hip back behind you and allow this lovely pelvic rotation? Just notice how my front knee is still tracking forward and then bring your hip back. So you're taking it back and forward. Sometimes this is the hardest one to do. Like, so you might have to hold on to a bench so that you're not doing this with your shoulders. So my upper body is still stable. From here, this is where I'm trying to get the pelvic rotation. Change sides and I'll show you from the side. I'm taking the hip back and forward, back and forward. This is probably the one that I've found the most benefit in, like when you're walking and running, just to get this lovely rotation and looseness through the back so you're not moving being so rigid. Often there is this confusion that you have to run with your center and be rigid. So we don't want to, we want to be engaged, but as you can see, nice and loose through the hips and back. Good. Now, keeping your staggered stance, take your arms out wide and just let your arms flop. Just like a child. So swing your torso. Just notice the arms coming forward and back. Change signs. So we just do five in each direction. Good. It's the torso and the spine that is twisting. The arms are just coming along and then step your feet together. So the last one that you do before you head out is ground yourself. So closing your eyes, softening your knees. Just feeling everything you've done through the body. Sense of now taking your body for a walk or a run. Take a breath in and float the arms overhead. As you breathe out, start to hinge forward towards me. 
Find your center, lift and connect your belly to your spine. And now just flop forward. Let your whole body be relaxed as you roll yourself back up. Float both arms overhead. Take a breath in, lift up and then lower. And now you're ready to go. Enjoy. Thank you, everybody.